large number of twins has enviably earned Igbora community the name the twins capital of the world. They say they are the world, they're the center of attraction, although rustic, they are seeking government attention on three major sectors, and that's going to be our focus on the program. This is Community Forum. I am Sarah Yiku. Welcome. We journeyed through beautiful sceneries, more than 80 kilometers from Lagos to Iguara community in Oyo State. Iguara, the headquarters of the Ibarakwa Central Local Government Area of Oyo State, prides itself as the home of twins and the twins capital of the world. On entering the sleepy town, you are immediately welcomed with a signpost of what the community stands for, the high number of twins. Igbora is a conglomerate town made up of six distinct communities whose stories form a rich history. Firstly, we have uh, Iboli, Bako, Iberekodo, Sagon, Idofi and Igbora on the other concepts. Iwa, miwa. This road leading into the town is tarred, but with evident potholes in some areas. Its internal roads are nothing to write home about. So many things have been neglected, you know, by the so uh, grassroots administration and so on. The roads are not well maintained. When they resurface the uh, road today, by the nice administration, it's uh, pit holes upon pit holes, damaging vehicles, cars, and all the rest of it. Moving further into the town, a statue of a mother with two children, one clutching to her hand and the other at her back, stands tall, signifying the industry the community is known for. But barriers surrounding the statue are now weak and rusty, and the place is now housing weeds and an array of posters. In Iguara, there is hardly any household that does not boast of at least a set of twins. It's a town of twins' pride. <laughs> Away from its reputation as the twin hub of Nigeria are problems that heat at the very heart of its people. Alake Alashela is a popular food vendor in Igbuara. A restaurant is at a strategic spot in the community with many customers always waiting for food. She's heading a group of women who are meeting on ways to improve their thrift society. These regular thrift meetings assist these women in their businesses and families. <laughs> After about an hour, the meeting was adjourned. <laughs> the 
The next morning, we met Alake at a restaurant. Preparations are on for the popular Ilasa soup, which locals say is a secret ingredient to birth twins. What's going on? She tells us that the community needs a lot of help from the government. We have the river dams to develop two around the border. Yes, on your dam, on your way, you saw it. To supply water, drinking water. That on your dam is supplying water to Abekuta Ogun State. It's supplying water to Lagos, drinking water. And yet, it doesn't supply water to the immediate landlord. And 99% or 90% of the catchment area of, the, uh, of that uh, dam is on Ibora land. I mean, that's gross marginalization. This large expanse of land is for a market in Ogboja, an area in Kwako, Igwara. For more than two decades, the community has been waiting for an ultra-modern market complex that was inaugurated in 1994. All the community has as a souvenir is newspaper articles and the approved plan and paper of the market complex that was to cost about 500,000 naira at that time and was to be completed in 12 months. Indigenes still have receipts of the 30 naira they paid at that time for spaces in the market, but they are still waiting for the actualization of this dream. Structures on the land have been abandoned, some of them with torn nets and missing window panes. This blue building housing the leadership and learning center of the Mana War doesn't receive visitors. Goats and rams stay there, but not the humans it was built for. The land is estimated to be around four hectares, which is about uh, ten acres of land. We want the government to come and reactivate it, to come and put structure on it, to allocate it to those people that have collected form since 1994 or to new uh, interested uh, public that would like to put on structures there so that it can be put into use. Because of the high number of twin birds, the population keeps increasing and indigenes are taking family planning seriously. This is the Saleoba Premier Healthcare Center for quality planning and child spacing services, supported with funding from the USAID. The registration area is always busy. A much bigger problem confronting Igboras, singletons, twins, triplets and other multiples is the rot in its citadels of learning. The beacon of hope meant to groom its young ones into successful people, the schools, 
reek of neglect. We visited one of the government schools founded in the 1980s. Ogboja Grammar School sits on a large expanse of land, but the giant dreams of its students need the support of the government to come to fruition. Students were writing an examination when we visited. A quick look around the classroom revealed a lot of things. Ceilings, painted white, have now turned brown, burdened by water, they're constantly falling off. The classroom walls, devoid of shine and the window panes, intertwined with the wood, are nowhere to be found. The staff room is in a much better state, though, with ceilings that could fall at any moment. Other classes have the same problem. Broken ceilings, cracked walls, patched roofs, uncompleted and abandoned buildings all over. Another problem. This is an hallway lined with goat feces. Goats stray into the school compound because the school lacks perimeter fencing. Students own the classes when it is bright at night. The goats take over, dropping waste, leaving the students to battle with the order while learning. Washing the school floors to rid them of the feces is nothing new to the students. In fact, the goats are seen around the environment, snacking on weeds and waiting around for the students to leave the classes so that they can take over. The state government began a renovation of some of the buildings a little over a year ago, but they have been abandoned. The school started with one building, which happened to be this building. The building is now very old. Uh, with the effort of the SGP, we have uh, roofed half of the building, but yet to be completed. The ceiling is not there, and that things like that. I'm appealing to the new governor to please assist us in this school. The first instance, the parents are very poor. Asking them to pay is not is hardly possible. But uh, if they cannot do all, let them come and complete this one in harness. The one they've started on. Because in the time they started about a year ago, the, 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 the place has been vacated, vacated by the student. Nobody is using it. So it's life value. Tap chairs and tables were not sufficient. Only teachers can use the table. The coppers, they are just managing. Most of this building, no electricity there. We expected a better situation at the Nawaruddin School. The first thing we noticed was the school's white signpost, which has in fact lost its aesthetic value. The school lacks basic infrastructure for conducive learning. Undaunted by this, classes still go on in these decrepit structures. This magnificent blue and white mosque is a neighbor to the badly run down structures the school is abhorring. All the classroom blocks look rough with mangled roofs. Weeds are growing in some of the abandoned blocks. The school has a number of run down buildings like this one here. It was in use before the roof caved in. Before the roof gave way, pupils were actually learning in this space, with unplastered walls, no window panes. Logs of wood used for roofing are stressed from having to absorb water. I'm not happy to say the real facts. We are facing many problems. The area in which our, my pupils are learning is not conducive. The officer from Sudev, they came with a photograph we write letters to back it, but no positive changes since then, up to today. This is the area of my focus. The pupils have been using this block since, the, since millennial time. So I employ government to assist us to renovate this block for us, so that my pupils will be learning in good conducive 
environment. As these pupils recite their rhymes, they are at risk. The abastus is heavy as a result of water. In another class, charts on the wall are scattered. Other classes share the same features. Many of the students come to school without shoes or school bags. A wake-up call for the government and well-meaning individuals to help urgently. We looked around and then noticed and a recreational facility for the pupils. On request, the only recreational facility for the pupils was brought out from the storeroom. Pupils have to queue to enjoy this once in a blue moon. Many of the pupils here do not have school shoes their uniforms are in bad state. Pupils are seen working like laborers during school hours, pan on head, cutlasses in hand. Away from the challenges the school is facing, celebrating the twin pride looks like a way to enjoy their leisure time. <laughs> In 2003, a former teacher took it upon herself to start the school's fence. It was a legacy for all the retiring school heads, but the project has remained here, probably due to lack of funds. School Laboratory is a green building by the Your State Primary Education Board project. The paint is washing off, and the window panes have been replaced with cartons, very dusty. It is in use but lacks maintenance. Almost all the windows are gone. But for a few teaching materials, the laboratory is practically empty. Toilet facilities are not adequate. These pupils have to go to the bush to answer the call of nature. The tanks stand like monument, but there is no water for the pupils. This is high. the only one toilet we are using, the school one and school four. And the population of the school is more than the toilet they give us. Even I can't even open the door because the odor is too much. People are many and they are using it uselessly. Even if you open it now, the odor will not allow us to stay in this area at all. So also we need water so that the people will be using the water. They enter the place without water and they are messing the floor. That is the reason why we can't open the toilet now. One of the older schools in Iguara, Methodist School, Oki, Agogo, is more than a hundred years. It has endured good and bad times. The state of the buildings is a clear sign that a legacy left by the missionaries have gone to waste. The signpost is so old and rusty and would require squinting the eyes to even see the name of the school. A much better one stands at the corner. Founded in 1950, the school has produced a lot of successful individuals from the town. An appeal has gone out to concerned individuals to assist the school to get back on track. Roofless buildings, trees growing in abandoned blocks, rusty roofs, unplastered walls, planks with nails are scattered everywhere. The roof of this particular building caved in recently after heavy rains. Fortunately, it was on a weekend when the pupils were not in school. Many more old buildings are weak, with cracks on the wall, a disaster waiting to happen. Lessons are on in this class, 
A quick survey of the classroom shows that it is a distressed building. This covering meant to be a roof is perforated with holes all over and when it rains, classes are put on hold. Trails of water on the window and buckets are on standby to receive the drops of water from the roof. The hallway ceilings are all broken and hanging. Nails are sticking out of some of them. For pupils in the school, learning is full of hazards. Pupils have been sacked from this dilapidated structure because of cracks and holes in the wall. We don't have chairs for the teachers. We don't have desks and, and benches for the puppies. So we don't have, the toilet we are having is not good. They are not conducive, they are not, uh, they are not the, the, the part of the classroom, they cannot write, 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 write anything about it. We have about four, five, five block of three classrooms or two classrooms each. But at present, we have only a block of two classrooms that is good. The rest are bad. We want to build with immediate effect because these people, are the, the way they are getting uh, lessons is not good enough. And you can see if for basically four and five are in one class. If there is any rain now, there is nothing, they, they cannot stay in that class. We drove to the community's foremost school, Igbora High School. The school is a great departure from others that we visited. The school was built by the community before the government took over its development. Impressive buildings and newly rehabilitated blocks of classrooms all around. Like old Fat Twist, we will continue to ask for more. The population of the school is growing larger, larger every year. So we need more teacher. The population of the student is 1,200. And uh, the teacher on ground, uh, 35. We want the government to give us more experts in that area, that is in that computer area, where they will be teaching the student. We, are, we, just, only work, we just have only one teacher for the school to teach. But the quarters and hostels are yearning for a facelift. The old buildings need renovation, nets are torn and dirty. Spiral jury is gaining ground, old pipes need to be changed. Weeds are creating a colony and buildings need fresh coats of quality paint. The quarters are yearning for a facelift. The Oyo state government says it is not unaware of the situation in Ibora schools and other schools in the state. We also got reports when we mix, uh, when we interfaced uh, uh, with the Ministry of uh, Education. They got reports of the worst schools in other states, in their levels. They have their pictures. They also have the ones that are a bit malleable, uh, and all that and all that. So we have records of these schools. Because of the situation on ground in the education sector, uh, that was why His Excellency Governor Sheyi Makinde, he went to Abuja and he met with Ubeck in Abuja, the, the leadership of Ubeck. And uh, he discovered that uh, there was some funds due to your state, 2.5 billion, uh, that was supposed to have been released. Uh, but luckily for us, it was not released before the expiration of the other our government. And so that is due to your state, so that will come to your state. So he has discussed already with the management of UBEC that that money will come. And so that we deploy the money for this kind of schools, and all the schools really. But we are going to tackle, first of all, the worst of the worst schools that the records are already there. We will start dealing with them immediately the funds uh, coming. The, the governor has already de uh, discussed with uh, UBEC and I know within a short while the funds will come in and uh, will roll out. Education is the best legacy and a conducive environment befitting for this is what Igbora indigents are asking from the government and philanthropist.
As the governor and commissioners settle in their various offices, residents are hopeful that a new administration will see to it that Igora becomes a thriving economic hub. And that's our show for this week. But don't forget, you can watch this episode of the program previous or subsequent episodes on our YouTube channel. You can also get in touch with us, invite us to your communities on the various platforms displayed on your screen. Many thanks for watching. I am Sarah Yuku. I'll see you next time.